Hello, Booktube. As you can see, I'm filming on a di different location again. But I thought that I have some nice natural light still left, so I might as well use that. So I'm filming in front of the, front of the window. So, yeah, I have my <laughs> checklist here of all the things I want to say. Um, so, I'm starting this new weekly series, or not a series, but weekly thing, called Reset Wednesday Reflections. Oh, that's the name for now. The, uh, mm -hmm. But basically, um, <laughs> as you probably saw, my January wrap-up was enormously long like I feel sorry for <laughs> sorry for all of you who decided to watch that plotted video to the end um, so I really need to make wrap-ups more often just to make it more comfortable for you as the viewer viewer and uh, for me as well no, it's easier to create shorter videos or less stressful, let's put it that way. And also I think that because I like I like booktube and making these videos so much that I I thought I really need to sort of create a habit or routine around making these videos, so making making this stuff, so um, I think that this weekly video thing will help me to do that. And then why I decided on Wednesday, well there's a bit of a backstory for that, I'm not sure if you want to hear that, but um, I used to play this game called World of Warcraft for many years with my little brother and that game um, had some well in that game there were some events and stuff that you could do like once a week until the reset day and that reset day here in Europe was on Wednesdays so yeah, I have not played that game for many years now because I no longer had any need to use the communication function of that game with my brother. So, but I I had sort of formed that habit around reset around resetting my week every Wednesday. So I might as well try to implement that element to my current situation and let's see if that works i think it might work rather nicely so yeah reset wednesday reflections it is and you know, i want this to be rather casual thingy like talk about books maybe some some videos that i've watched and music that i've listened because and as well as other stuff because I really like watching those videos myself, like all the Saturday hodgepodges and uh, Sunday miscellanies and Ramble with the Yarn and all those kind of thing, all those kind of things that you see on BookTube. I really like watching those. So, so I want to uh, try to do something like that myself. And then the next thing. Thank you. Uh, I hope most of you have seen uh, Bob and Isabella at the fonts and Kids at Kids World. They did this amazing um, BookTube newbie challenges video. If you haven't seen that, I'll put the links down below, just in case. And um, I was invited to do a chat with Steve. Donahue about this topic and, and that was a rather daunting experience like his channel is rather big so but 
let's not go too deep into that, but um, uh, you probably remember that I said in my second video that I like to sort of clar clarify things and I feel the need to elaborate if I if there's something I feel I didn't say or if there's some room for misinterpretation. So I thought I'd go through some points here. First of all, about the subscriber numbers. Like I said that I don't really you know care about the numbers. I want my channel to stay relatively mo relatively small, and I really mean that. Like, if my channel stayed below two hundred subscribers for the rest of my life, that would be totally fine. Um, but I wanted to you know, point out one thing about that that's really been sort of bothering me and that's that weird feeling of anxiety stress and guilt like obviously more subscribers sort of create this sense of more expectations I guess but also guilt because uh like I haven't been around that long yet, and I already already have quite a lot of subscribers considered to the amount of time I'm spent here, and it just doesn't feel right because there are so many great great channels out there, so many great booktubers putting excellent content who are either below or just above at two hundred subscribers. So. Yeah, it just doesn't feel right. So that sort of creates guilt in me, like... Like, I don't deserve this. And, yeah. I'm not trying to humble brag here, I'm really, you know... Really just trying to point out this issue that it, something weird about these subscriber numbers that just, just doesn't seem to be right. And then, secondly, something about expectations. I, I already touched upon those issues on the video we did with Steve, but I wanted to point out that sometimes I feel like I'm sort of this exotic Finnish animal that's being that's in a zoo being observed by observed by the ma masses, and what I mean by that is that uh, like obviously there are probably some of you who come to my channel because I am a Finnish person and you might um, hope to find some Finnish content here and obviously that's what I want to do I want to sort of bring out some Finnish literature every now and then but I hope you're not expecting to see you know, finish content on a regular weekly basis. And then uh, something about, you know, the negative ne negative feedback or I think we touched a little bit about, you know, the losing sub subscriber thingy as a negative thing but I want to say something about, you know, the thumbs down thing. Like, I'm, I'm okay with thumbs down. Like, that doesn't bother me. But what bothers me is that when I get no explanation why that thumbs down was given, like, I get no feedback. Like, was this because something... Was the thumbs down because something I said? Was it something I didn't say? Is this from a troll? Is there someone who just doesn't like my face? Or what it is? So <laughs> if you leave a thumbs down, uh, you might as well give me, you know, some comment explaining what was wrong about that video. Why did you decide to do that? 
So yeah, I'd like to hear feedback, you know, constructive criticism. That's that's what I want. And then I'd like to say some words of encouragement for those who are thinking about, you know, making your own channel or who are just, you know, beginning the journey. Like, as I said, the video, the first step was the hardest, at least for me. Like the threshold to make the first video is so huge, it's almost... It's almost unsurpassable. But once you make the first video, it's really, it really starts to get easier after that. It's no longer this very, you know, weird experience. It's slowly becoming more and more natural, I think. And then, um, I guess you've probably heard this. Um, this phrase that write a book that you would like to read and that's something I think you can apply to booktube as well like make a channel that you would like to watch and that's something that I'm trying to do and I hope that you who are thinking about making your own channel sort of consider in your minds Make a channel that you would like to watch. Don't uh, cater, you know, to some specific audiences just because you want um, to meet their sort of wishes and whatever. Uh, do this for yourself. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. And then yeah that's enough enough rambling so let's get on with the books like this week i didn't manage to uh, finish that many books i finished only one and that's jl runeberg suomen runoilija oh jl jl runeberg the poet of finland and this was written by Raija Majama and Mariut Paula Harju. And yeah, this is basically just a short biography of this guy. And gives a really nice, well, brief, brief a look who he was and what did he do. So, J. L. Runeberg, J. L. Runeberg, for your English people. Um, he was our, oh, he is our national poet who lived in the 19th century. And he was a poet, a priest, a journalist, a teacher, and he is sort of, he was one of the most important figures in creating. Finnish national identity in the wake of uh, national romanticism and st stuff like that in the 19th century. And mm -mm, what was I supposed to say? Yeah. Um, in these days, he's not that much read, but he is pretty much, you know, a part of Finnish identity. Uh, especially in the form of our national anthem, because his poem written in Swedish, Vortland, in Finnish, Maamme, um, those lyrics form the basis of our national anthem. And, 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 and. Oh, yeah, I might, best, well, I might as well elaborate why it was crucial in the forming of national identity. Like, um, from somewhere around 13th century onwards until the early 19th century, Finland was part of Sweden. 
Swedish people uh, sort of slowly conquered Finland as part of you know northern crusades and then their sort of domination ended in Finnish war I think it was called in the early 19th century when Sweden and the Russian Empire fought against each other and Russia, the Russian Empire won and Finland became annexed to them. So we were part of the Russian Empire until 1917 when we gained our independence. And you know, creating that national identity you know, after that, after and around that Finnish war was really important like we were still I guess uh, finding our place like <laughs> there's a popular saying that we are not sweet we are not S Swedish people we don't want to become Russian people so let's be Finnish people and so yeah he are Runeberg and then for of course, Elias Lönnrot, who wrote, who compiled Kalevala, a national epic, they were really important for forming the national identity. And yeah, why I read this book? Obviously, it's because on the fifth day of February, we celebrated Yel Runeberg's day, and we raised a flag in his honor. And that's when I thought I might read this and pay more attention to our national poet. Yeah, not much more to say about that book. I might read a poem on you know, a separate video in Finnish, <laughs> if you want to hear. Alright, and what I am currently reading... Dante. Jumalahden näytelmä, or the, the Divine Comedy. I'm trying to um, catch up with Tom L.A. Book's uh, Dante series that he's making. Go check them out. And, yeah. Obviously, this is very uh, important, important text and and this is a reread for me, but it's really great to sort of be able to follow follow up with a sort of Dante expert and Dante fan along the along the way. Oh, and and uh, just recently someone mentioned in a video that uh, pretty much every uh, every uh, edition of Divine Comedy comes with notes. And I would like to say that this has zero notes, and this is this is the only translation into Finnish that is available. Like two different translations exist. So not all editions come with notes. Maybe that's a uh, English thing. And then I'm also reading very slowly, see if I can, it's not really visible, but yeah, Kanti by Giacomo Leopardi. These are po poems, both in Italy and English. Yeah, I'm reading them, basically one poem at a time. And so far it has been really rewarding experience, although I have some, sometimes I have a bit of issue with the translations but most of the time this is really really good and the final book that I'm currently reading or not the final but <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot to bring the rest of my books with me yeah final book uh, is Sinuhe Egyptilainen by Mika Valtari. 
also known as the Egyptian in English. And this was my booktube spin book. It's huge tome. It's rather fast paced and easy read once you get it going. So it's not it's not a big issue the size that I that I mean. Yeah, I might talk about those later once I finish them. Um, yeah, I won't talk about movies or music this time. I think I've gone on long enough already. You know, just to get this weekly thing going and get my thoughts and ramblings out of the way. So, yeah, I guess. Um, I guess that's it. No more. No more things to say. So. Thanks for watching and looking forward to your thoughts and comments as always. That's like many people say comments are, you know, the, the best thing a lot about booktube booktubing and I really really wholeheartedly agree with that. You know, comments really make this worth doing. So yeah. Until next time, thank you.